Stan Jibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Whiskey One Good Vibrations at your service. I'm going to describe an antenna idea that just sort of popped into my head. You know, with a sort of like no, pop goes the weasel, except pop goes Stanley's brain. As if that's anything news. But what I'd really like to do to get getting serious is describe an antenna that comprises a set of dipoles connected to a length of 50 ohm coaxial cable which runs to your radio. You go to a Ballon, uh, a, a typical one-to-one -one Ballon transformer, which you can purchase uh, at online at many, many uh, electronics retail outlets these days. Uh, just go to the back of QST magazine if you don't know anywhere else to go. But Or you can go online and search for Ballon, B-A-L-U-N. Anyway, you know how to find them or they'll find you. What this antenna comprises is a set of dipoles and I've numbered them. Dipole number one, dipole number two, dipole number three. Just three of them are shown as examples here but they have a certain common characteristic. They all lie on a straight line essentially this uh, ballon coil labeled B is in Bravo is exaggerated in size for clarity but antenna number two for example runs along a straight line single straight line antenna number three the longest dipole is exactly twice the length of the shortest one and each one measures one half wavelength overall at a given frequency F and the maximum range um, for any set of these dipoles is some frequency and then twice that frequency in megahertz say. N megahertz is less than or equal to F is for frequency uh, is less than or equal to 2 times N megahertz so 5 to 10 megahertz, 10 to 20 megahertz. You get the uh, you get the drift, right? It's a 2 to 1 continuous range dipole antenna with pretty much a 50 ohm purely resistive impedance at any frequency f in the given range which extends over a 2 to 1 uh, span. I'm only showing three of these antennas here but actually you may have many many more. They can run out in all kinds of directions as long as they pretty much occupy a continuous span of lengths between a given length L and a given length 2L. Does that look like a lowercase l to you? You don't want it to look like 1 and 21, do you? But anyway, the gist of it is you keep on going with these. Here, I've got five of them so far. You can have a hundred of them if you want. And they run out in all directions in three dimensions. So that what you get is sort of a, a discombobulated spheroid uh, with, a, with a two to one radius range ratio of antenna wires. Just, it looks, um, well this is why I call it a porcupine. Each antenna can be considered to be one of the quills in this little porcupine. Maybe I should have labeled this P as in Papa. A very t 
tiny porcupine with very long quills in the ratio of length L to 2L. So it's a, a continuous range of frequencies from some uh, ra uh, value to twice that value. Now there's no particular reason why you can't make the range larger than 2. Uh, but then you get into harmonic operation of the antennas and that kind of complicates the picture but but not necessarily to the detriment of the system the idea is to get a continuous kind of a non-resonant antenna comprised of a great many little resonant pieces all put together it's like if you put together enough bricks in a random hodgepodge of bricks, uh, but sort of in an organized random fashion, you'll get a really cool sculpture. It, 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 it's almost like progressive art, but what I call it is simply nothing more than a porcupine dipole. Now, porcupines cannot, contrary to some uh, popular wisdom or popular stupidity, throw their quiz, uh, quills, nor can this antenna throw its elements. But it can throw a signal out over the air. I've never tried one of these, uh, and at HF it would be quite a feat uh, to you probably have to use aluminum tubing and uh, you can order that from Texas Towers. Texas Towers is going to love you when <laughs> you're done with them making a comprehensive porcupine dipole for say the 7 through 14 megahertz range of frequencies ideal for listening uh, or transmitting. The military is going to love you too by the way and maybe they'll love me. <laughs> uh, they would have loved me more when I was younger, I think, but I'm, I'm, I'm an old man now. I'm too old to serve. Unless they want to use me as a consultant. Uh, God, can you imagine using a weirdo like me in the military? As a, oh, go, don't go there, Stanley. Don't go there. This is the idea, though. It's just a bunch of dipoles. It's a pretty common concept you know one dipole for each band except here you're more or less making one dipole for every imaginable possible frequency you can get in a given range L to 2L preferably although it can be larger I think you get my drift I get you think I, I think you get the idea that the antenna is going to work pretty well over a wide range of frequencies and I think you get the drift that if you put one of these things up you're gonna make Texas Towers or some other co corporation very happy and you may make your neighbors and the city commission where you live absolutely hysterical with fury at your at your insolence to even think of doing such a horrible deed as put up a porcupine antenna in their community. Stangibalisco! Whiskey one good vibrations. Saying 73, which means best regards in ham radio jargon. And so long, which, in my CW native fist, shall forever after, and on all porcupine antennae, mean. Did da 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 da.